Hello everyone and welcome to 30 Grim Days. 30 Grim Days are a series of 30 bite-sized creative activities that the Grim & Co team have put together for you to do in your home. Now before we get stuck into them, an important thing to say is we hope that these creative activities are going to be fun or enjoyable or relaxing for you to do. What we would hate is for them to stress you out. So if you ever feel like you're getting behind, if you ever feel like you want to skip any, that's totally fine. It's okay if you don't do every single activity. It's okay if they take you 40 days or 50 days or 60 days to do. You do them however works for you. The most important thing for us is that you're enjoying yourself and you're having fun. So however you want to do them, we do hope that you like these activities. All right, let's get stuck in. Okay, so for this task you're going to need some paper. A3 or bigger would be great, but a few sheets of A4 is fine too. Um, some colours, pens, pencils, but just a range of colours. Um, a pen or a pencil or both, and then some scissors too. So the first thing you can do is take a one big sheet of paper or two A4 sheets, if you like me, and then draw the trunk and branches of a tree and put lots of branches and twigs on there as well. That'll be important later on. Um, so once you've done that, get a fresh sheet or sheets of paper. And then I want you to draw the outline of 30 leaves, one leaf for each day of these challenge. Now, I've done mine too small. They need to be a bit bigger than that because you need to be able to write on them. Um, um, so maybe you'll need two sheets and then cut them all out. So then you'll have the outline uh, cut out shape of 30 leaves. Now, once you've done those 30 leaves, I want you to move on to thinking about different emotions you might be feeling at the moment. So on a fresh sheet of paper, I want you to write down any different emotions you feel like you might be feeling right now, whether they might be billed as happy or sad, negative or positive, any emotion that you might feel. They're all valid. And then I want you to kind of colour code the colours or shapes or patterns that kind of represent those emotions for you. Next up, take one leaf. That is going to be today's leaf, the leaf that represents today and how you're feeling today. Then colour and draw on it to represent those feelings. So for me, I'm feeling quite tired, so that's why I've done my green pattern. And I've got quite a lot of work to do, so I'm feeling a bit stressed, which is why I've done my red as well. And then I've drawn that on one side and on the other side, I'm just going to write down a sentence, a few words, explaining why I think I kind of feel the way that I do. So you'll do yours with colours representing how you feel, whatever that feeling might be, and a few words explaining why you think you feel that way. So that's today's leaf. So we'll go back to our tree, grab something to stick your leaf down with, be it blue tack, or you could put it up on the wall and use like um, cork board and pins, things like that. But once you've done it, get your leaf from today and stick it anywhere you want to on your tree to represent how you felt today on the first day of the challenge. So it's day two of 30 Days of Grim, and today we're going to be thinking again about our leaves, about our trees, and about capturing and thinking about how we're feeling, whatever that might be. So once again, grab one of your leaves and colour code it according to how you're feeling today on day two, which might be similar or different or exactly the same as the day before. But colour code it, pattern it according to your code, your individual code that you've done of your emotions. And then write on there a little bit about why you're feeling that way. Then once you've done it, grab whatever you're using to stick stuff down and stick it onto your tree. But after you've done that, just for today, I want you to do a little extra step as well. I want you to find someone else in your home and to ask them just how they're feeling today. You could just ask them like that, or you might want to show them your colour code and say where they feel that they kind of sit. They might even be feeling emotions that you had not thought of and put on there. And once you've had a little bit of chat about how you're both doing, then I would like you to ask them, what are the things that they do that make them feel a little bit better, a bit calmer or a bit happier if other things are a bit tough? Because sometimes a lot of us might feel angry sometimes or worried or sad and those emotions are totally valid but it can be a little bit helpful to have strategies that can make you feel a little bit better at those times to kind of regulate those emotions. 
So for example, if I'm feeling a little bit stressed out, things that I know help me will be stuff like going for a walk or a run outside, having something to eat, because often that is why I'm angry, or soothing myself by listening to my absolute favourites, my Harry Potter audiobooks. So those are things that help calm and soothe me. But what works for you and what works for the people in your house? Today for day two, I want to ask them that question, have a discussion about it. You might want to make a list and note them down, or you might just want to have a good old chat about how are people feeling and what are the things that you can do or think about that make you feel a little bit better when times are slightly tough. Okay, here we are on day three, and we've got a new challenge to do. Now, I hope that you'll still do your leaf with its colour coding about how you're feeling and a little sentence on there about why or what's been going on as well. Um, and we'll just assume from now on that you're going to do that every day. So I might occasionally remind you, but just get on with it from now on. So new task today. Um, and what we're going to do today is going to be a bit more drawing. So what I want you to draw is an object, an object in your home that has been important or significant to you in some way during lockdown. So since this crisis started, an object in your home that maybe has been important, been useful, been helpful, maybe it's taken on a new meaning or importance over the last few weeks. So the thing that I'm going to draw is my cat's scratch post. Because amazingly, after a year of her not using it, I have taught her to use it over the last few weeks. So that was one productive thing that I have managed in lockdown, teaching my cat to use her scratch post. So I'm going to go and draw that now. And you can do your drawing however you want to. You could do it cartoony, you could do it really realistic. But once you've chosen your important object and you draw it, the thing you've got to do is you have to personify it. So turn it into like a character. So give it things like facial features, eyes, nose, mouth, ears, um, limbs you might want to give it, accessories, clothing, but anything to turn this object into a bit of a character. So shall I show you what I've done with my scratching post? So welcome everyone to Margot the scratching post. So as you can see on my drawing, um, I've given her some wrinkles, she's a little bit of an old lady, um, and some facial features on there as well. And you'll also spot that I've started to write a fact file about Margot. Little facts about her to turn her not just into a drawn character, but into a kind of fleshed out written character as well. So I've got down there her age, um, her occupation, she used to be a sociology lecturer, she's now retired, uh, where she's from, her likes, dislikes, I might go on to add other things as well, like any skills she has, any things she cares about, anything that really annoys her perhaps. But that's what I've done about Margot the scratching post. So that is your activity for day three. Pick an object that's important to you or has been significant somehow over the past couple of months, draw it, paint it, but turn it into a character by giving it features like eyes, limbs, accessories, and also by creating, however you want to, a little bit of a fact file about it. So make notes, write a character description, do bullet points around your character like I have done. But that is your task for day three. So, Welcome to day four. Now day four is carrying on from day three. So to recap what we did in day three is we thought about an object that has been important or significant to us somehow during lockdown. We drew or painted that object and then we personified it. We added features to our drawings like eyes, nose, things like that. And then we wrote about and thought about that character's personality and its backstory as well. Now, that object character that you created is going to become the star of its own comic strip. It's going to be a three panel comic strip. So what you need to do first of all is get a fresh, plain sheet of paper. Take your sheet of paper and draw on it so it is split into three panels. Now, normally what you get in comic strips is that in three panel comic strips is that the first panel, the left hand panel, kind of sets up the story. 
it gets us interested. So the character that's in there, maybe they're worried about something, maybe they've noticed something, there's been a change, maybe they've got something they want, but something has happened that kind of sets up the story. So thinking about your object, maybe how it's been used a bit differently during lockdown, maybe it's become important, but it wasn't before, maybe it's even more important than it already was. What could the setup for its story be? What could it be that would get us interested? So now I'm going to show you a little example. Now I'm sure you all remember Margot the Scratching Post and I've done her first panel there, her setup panel. So you can see Margot is looking a bit suspicious and she's saying, hmm, what's that sound? So that was my panel one of my comic. So you need today just need to do your first panel, your setup panel. What is your object character getting interested in, worried about, excited about in panel one of your comic? Get drawing. So here we are, day number five, and because I am predictable and because you are very clever, you have probably worked out what we are doing on day number five. Yes, you're right. We're carrying on with our comic strip and we are doing our second panel of it. Now, in a three panel comic strip, we have already established panel number one normally has the setup of the joke or the little plot that it's carrying out. Um, but panel number two has the conflict. Things get more complicated. Stuff gets difficult, stuff goes wrong, things get tough for our main characters. So you've set up a little bit of something in number one, an idea, a quest, a worry, a hope. In panel number two, that needs to get complicated somehow. Something goes wrong, something goes awry, maybe they want something but there's something in the way, something they need to be able to get that. What is going to be the conflict for your character in your second panel? Now, as you can see in mine, things are getting pretty sticky for Margot. Um, so in panel number one, we had our setup, she heard a mysterious sound, but in panel number two, oh dear. Conflict has arisen, the cat is scritching her, as the cat now does, because she is trained to do so. So that was my conflict. Margot is getting scratched by the cat. Oh dear, what's going to happen next? How are things going to get resolved in the third panel? I don't know. And a sneak preview, we're probably not going to find out until tomorrow, because today you've only got to do one panel, your second panel of your comic strip. So think about it, what could be the conflict that takes place in panel number two, maybe do a practice sketch and then draw it, your second panel of your comic. 